Hey, welcome back. Today I'm going to do something a little different. This is an Acer uh, model. It's an Aspire X1301. Um, it's got an AMD Athlon 2 times 2. It's a 240 dual core processor, uh, 4 gigabytes of memory, uh, terabyte drive, nothing really special. This is an old, uh, this is a workhorse of mine. And what I do with this is, this is my security camera computer. This one runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week, every day of the year. And it's probably been turned on for the last five years or so. Um, I do take it down and blow the dust out of it every year or so. And it looks like I haven't done it in a while, but I think I've done it last summer. And um, this computer came to me I don't know where from, but uh, manufacturer date, here we go, 2010, um, March 29th. So this computer is 10 years old, and I know I've probably had this in service for a security camera probably five years now, running 24 hours a day. And uh, my main concern with this right now is it's it is no fault with it, is, is uh, power supply capacitors. I'm worried that if I leave this too much longer, I'm going to run into a problem where the power supply shuts down or explodes, and then I have a problem on my hands. So what I'm going to do today, I'm going to take the power supply out, and we're going to take it apart and take a look at it. Um, you see I took out the CD-ROM and I stuffed a 2 terabyte drive in here as uh, for uh, recording the media. Um, power supply is easy to take out. I want to look at some of these caps. None of these caps are bulging yet. But there is some dust on the CPU fan. I'm going to clean that all out. So let's get the power supply out and uh, open it up and make sure that all those caps inside are still good. You know, I, I think it's severe service, so. So I think I've got everything. Let me take this one. This connector. I usually don't like taking things apart unless they're broken, but in this case I want to make sure it's going to run for a long time without being interrupted and uh, so I'll take this outside blow it out I don't see any bulging caps here which is a good sign but uh, that doesn't mean any of them have failed I don't think they have so put this aside I'll blow out the dust and we'll focus on this power supply let's open this up This thing is a, let's see here, 5 volts, 220 watt max for all the power supply outputs, so, so it's a very weak one. That's why I'm kind of concerned that, you know, you know it's warm since I just turned it off, but um, so I'm kind of concerned that it's capacitors in here might be bad. Okay, that's that. Uh, here's one. I don't think there's a fan. In oh yeah, there is a fan in this thing. Check the fan too, make sure it's lubricated well. All right, and 
yes, we have one bulgy cap here. Got lots of nicely brown cooked printed circuit boards. So let's take this apart. And see what we can do for it. Check our high voltage cap. Make sure it's dead. Half a volt, one volt. Okay, we're good. You can see the heat, how this thing's been roasted here on this side. Seen a lot of use, a lot of hours on this power supply. So, like I said, I got one bad one there. Oh boy, I probably got more than. This one here. Oh yeah, 1.1. That's a 2200 microfarad cap, cap that's got a 1.1. Let's... This thing's pissing me off here. Let me get, let me finish taking this thing apart. So from what I can see with my ESR tester, I got probably four bad caps in here. Uh, There's a bad one here, bad one here, this one, and possibly that one. Um, some of these other ones are, they're doing okay. But uh, I think replacing those first will be the best chance of survival for this power supply. I think we'll extend its life a little by putting some new caps in it and putting it back in service. Like I said, it didn't sh didn't show any symptoms whatsoever, but I had a feeling that this thing is done for because, like I said, it's been five years of continuous use. And uh, I've got other things that have been on continuous use for two or three years and they use the crap out because of bad caps. So. Let's get this done today and then put it back in service. This one hasn't vented yet, but it's all puffed out on both ends. It is a, a 2200 microfarad at 16 volts. And in its place, I'm going to put a 3300 microfarad. Um, this is a quality cap, this is a um, cheap Chinese one. So we're going to be upgrading here too. So I'll get through recapping uh, the ones I think are bad and then we'll uh, what we'll do is we'll have a, a close look at some of these caps I pulled out. Alright, let's turn our attention to the fan. This fan is working okay. It's not seized up, but it's going to get a relube. So let's pull the sticker off. It's pretty typical for any computer fan nowadays. I'm 
get at the bearings by taking the sticker off. It's like they got it plugged here with something. Let's pull this out. If I can get under it, it's like a rubber plug. Come on. It's gonna fight me. As soon as you turn the camera on, things fight you. Okay, so then there's our shaft and our lock washer. To get that out, that's gonna be a challenge. Might have to dig at it. It's typically a split washer, and uh, what you gotta do is just dig it out. There we go. Let it on my hand. Okay, once the split washer is out, the fan disassembles and you can relube it easily. This one's got lots of lubrication inside, but we're going to do it again. together. Split washer. And you just push it on. Might work better if I get two. put the plug back in and then we block it with some tape and then we're done so on this power supply I replaced three capacitors these cap capex on they're Chinese garbage. You can see how they're puffy on the ends. Uh, this one's a 2200 at 16. This one is a 1500 at 6.3. And I replaced them both with 3300 at 16, just because that's what I have lots of. See, lots of these, and um, they fit and the extra capacitance won't hurt, it'll actually help. So, and I tested all the other ones, everything's good. Um, removed a lot of this hardened silicone, because it just, I don't know why they, they flood these boards with these silicone and it just gets in the way of the airflow. So I like to pick some of it off and uh, we'll re reassemble this. All right. Got the power supply reassembled and the dust blown out of here. So all that's left to do now is just reassemble and uh, put it back in service. Let's look at these caps. Okay, so the first one I took out is a 2200. If you can read that, it's 2216 volts. And uh, let's see what it says here on the meter. It reads 11 microfarads for down from 2200. Is that right? 
and it's got a 3.17 ohm ESR. ESR should be down around 10 milliohms. So that one's cooked. Second one I took out is a 1500 microfarad at 6.3 volts. And let's see what this measures at. This one measures down at 9.1 microfarad and it's got a 2.8 ohm ESR. ESR should be about 120, 100, 100 milliohm, somewhere around that 100 milliohm mark. There's a third one I took out. It is a 2.2 microfarad at 450 volts and it measures 1.3 microfarads at 63 ohms ESR and the ESR should be down around 10 ohms or 20 ohms not 60. So those are the three culprits that I replaced and uh, now it should be a little more reliable. All right let's plug it in and see how it works. It's got an automatic uh, turn on when the power is applied so put the power cord in should come alive. You have the right source here. Oh, here we go. Uh, keyboard. Looks like it's working good. It was working good before, but those did bad caps in there. Uh, I don't know how much longer it would have lasted. It could have gone another month, it could have gone another couple years, who knows. But I don't think they were going to last that much longer the way, the way they were. Pretty poor condition. Um, shut that light off. But I'm glad I took it apart and dealt with it now rather than having it break down and then uh, dealing with it after the fact. Usually when capacitors in the primary part of the power supply circuit fail, it usually takes out the MOSFET or the switching transistor with it. And that's something you want to try and avoid. And uh, yeah, it's, it's all looking good. Let me see if it boots up. It should boot right up into the camera software. not the fastest computer but it doesn't need to be it all it needs to do is record video and everything's working good just need to establish a connection with the cameras and there they are everything's working 100% all right thanks for watching